72% of the wave should be reflected at the surface of the body, but the body itself, the muscle material that we are using to represent the body, is lossy. The attenuation constant, alpha, for muscle is about 23.6, which means the skin depth, which is 1 over alpha, is just 4 centimeters. So since we assumed that the body we are modeling is 45 centimeters thick, the body is more than 10 skin depths thick. As a result, the, the part of the wave that does propagate through the snow body interface is decaying to zero before it reaches the other side of the body. We can see the exponential decay of the electromagnetic wave in this plot, which shows a snapshot of the EZ fields in the body at the same moment in time as on the previous slide at 19,400. So on the left here, it's probably right here where the plot ended, is the surface, the left surface of the body, and over here is the right surface of the body. So here in this plot you can see the wave quickly decays to zero well before the fields reach the right surface of the body. Next here is a plot of the EZ field at the observation point when the body is included in the model. As before, the first pulse we see here is the initial downward propagating wave towards the ground. The second pulse that we start to see is the small reflection as before that we got for the snow surface. But then a larger reflection occurs and this is from the body. We can see that the body and the snow surface are close enough to each other that the second half, this part, of the reflection from the surface of the snow overlaps with the beginning of the reflection from the body. And since none of the wave makes it through the body, when the body is included we no longer see any reflection from the ground. If we overlap the sampled electric field at the observation point when the body is included versus not included, we can directly compare the reflections. Here we can clearly see the reflection generated by the body. Since the red curve is behind the blue curve, when we plot the waveforms in this order, it's not obvious to us, but the red curve and the blue curve are identical up until the reflection from the body starts. So in this range, the red and the blue are identical. And this makes sense because up until the wave reaches the body, the geometries that we are modeling in both models are the same. Also as expected we can see that the reflection from the body occurs about halfway between the reflection from the snow surface and the reflection from the ground. Then this makes sense because the body is located about halfway between those two interfaces. We can also see that the reflection from the body is much stronger than the reflection from the snow surface or the ground. So this is from the snow this is from the ground, and this one has a much higher amplitude. And this is also what we expect because the reflection coefficient for the air-snow boundary is about 0 0.12, 12% reflected, and the reflection from the snow-ground interface is 0.35 at an angle 179 degrees, whereas the reflection of the snow-body boundary is much higher. It's 0.72 at an angle of 177 degrees, so about 72% reflected. Now let's take a step back and examine these overall results. What do you think so far? Do you think these initial results look promising enough that this technology is worth pursuing? You can pause the video if you like. Well, it certainly seems promising that the body produces such a large reflection compared to the snow and the ground. What this means is that we don't even necessarily need to know how deep the snow is, if we move the radar system horizontally above the surface of the snow, and if we suddenly see a larger reflection, and that reflection also disappears just a short distance away in all directions as we scan the area horizontally, then that could be a clear indication that there is a 
body buried in the snow at that location. If we did want to pursue this idea further, what improvements or additions do you think we should make to our model in order to better understand the physics of this problem and design the best possible radar system?